spend a little time in the Word of God, and um, let's go with it, okay? Uh, sometimes God asks us to do things that we can't, and He knows it. <laughs> and that's why He gave us the Holy Spirit. To teach us and to direct us and guide us, to instruct us, and even to show us things yet to come. So anytime you read the word of the Lord and uh, he asks you to do something, he already knows you can't do it. But you see, we'll try to do it in our own power and have to fail about a hundred times to come to that conclusion. Lord, I can't do that. And the Lord says, I know. That's why I sent my Holy Spirit to help you and give you the grace and the mercy to do what I tell you to do. So learn to walk in the Spirit and you will not fulfill the uh, lust of the flesh. I want to turn to 1 Peter now, chapter 3, verse 8 and 9. And uh, come on and have a seat. We've got some chairs over here. Or there's, there's a couple. We've got a couple over there. <laughs> Hallelujah. I want everybody to say, Lord, Lord thank, you. thank you. Therefore, there is now no condemnation in Christ. in Christ. If you're experiencing that, that's not the Lord. That's either your conscience bothering you, needs to be cleansed with the blood, or that's the enemy. So you've got to learn just to be open to God, and it's the most beautiful thing in the world. To walk with God. It's so rewarding to experience his presence wherever you go. When I'm cutting grass, I have some of the, the Lord in me has some of the greatest fellowship you've ever seen me cutting grass. I mean, I, I don't care what I do, it's always God in me. And, uh, and he helps me in every situation. So it's good to be here. The Lord in me is here. We're having a great time this morning. Well, when I go home, it'll be the Lord in me. Wherever I go, it's the Lord in me. Wherever I go, he goes with me. And that's one of the beautiful things about walking in the Lord. I want to stop here for a moment. Do we have Friday night movie? Oh, it's the, the next. Okay. All right, no, no movie this Friday night. Okay, let's look at verse 8. Finally, and when Paul, of course, he's, you know, he's a talking and he's going to catch his breath here. He's going, finally, brethren, all of you, say all of you. All of you. Hey, that's me. Yeah, that's you and me should be of one and the same mind. See, that goes right back with the unity that uh, Doris was teaching us uh, Wednesday night. Now, we need to ask our question, that question, are we of the same mind? It's quiet in here. <laughs> well, <clears throat> digest that and ask the Lord. Let him show you. And the same, united in spirit. Not in flesh, not in soul activities, but in spirit. Sympathizing with one another, loving each other as brethren of one household. Compassionate and courteous, Tender-hearted and humble. Lord, I don't know if I can do that. Well, let's see. What can we do? Well, let's read the next verse. Put the next verse up there, and then we'll come back and see how the Lord's going to handle that, that we can all be in one mind and love one another. Okay, let's read that. Always return evil for evil. Oh, well, got that wrong? Oh, 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 thank you for correcting me. Never return evil for evil. Why? How many of you ever heard of the sowing principle? What you sow, you reap. A lot of people don't understand why certain things are happening in their life. As far as God's concerned, we're all perfect. By what Christ did on the cross. But how many of you know our conduct sometimes is another matter? Y'all didn't hear me, did you? I, I said sometimes our conduct and our thinking 
which I call stinking thinking. I have a message on that, stinking thinking. <clears throat> We're not perfect. Let me read that again. Never return evil for evil or insult for insult. You know, when I first became a Christian, I didn't quite understand that the Lord, I thought the Lord, you know, he went to heaven and he left me down here to take care of things. But then I found out he sent the Holy Ghost and he's as close to me as I is to myself. Uh, my body's the temple of the Holy Ghost. And because uh, I used to send people to the moon. Yeah, some of you have heard me, you know. I know my brother never done that, you know. See, it just takes one. Just put your, put your foot like this right there. Somebody say something you don't like, always send them to the moon. And that way you don't have any more problem with them. Because how, if they're on the moon, how can they bother you down here? And don't you look at me like you've never done that because I know you have too. But you see, that's not the way God wants us to handle it. See, Rick knows that. And so, and you know it. So how do we have, how do we, we be one in Christ? How do we be of one mind, one spirit? How do we do that? Very simple, not complicated. I'm going to, I'm going to give you the verses on it to help you out on that in a little while. But look at this, scolding and tongue lashing and berating, but on the contrary, blessings. Now keep in mind what you sow, you reap. But I love Jesus. Brother Bob, I love Jesus. Yeah, that's good. I hope you do. But I'm telling you, if you, if you sow something bad, you're going to reap something bad. That's what the word of the Lord says. Anybody, anybody out there? Are you hearing me? Yeah, but I'm, the, I'm the, the wife of the preacher. I don't care. I'm the wife of the deacon. I don't care. What you sow, you're going to reap. Yeah, but I go to church every Sunday when I feel like it anyway. Don't make no difference. What you sow, the blood, the blood. I'm covered with the blood. I hope so. But whatever you sow, you're going to reap. I ain't heard an amen in here yet. I, I don't think you get. I, I'm gonna come out and get. I'm gonna come out there and crawl all over you guys, right? All right, little where's that? Say now, 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 so everybody say never. never. What does that mean? Never, never. never. But see, the, if you haven't let the old man go to the cross and die, how many of you know he's gonna come to the surface? You, you, you know what I mean? If you don't say what I like, I'm going to tell you a thing or two right off the hand. I'm going to point my finger at you, all my fingers at you. That way, I won't have any pointing at me. So you got to learn to you got to learn to pull. <laughs> You've heard of two barrels? Give them five. <laughs> But you know yourself. Now you think the last time somebody did something and said something you didn't like. How do you handle that? That's why the Lord said by the stripes you are healed. Because Christians will, sometimes will kill each other. I didn't hear an amen on that. Oh, uh, we, we don't, you know, we, we, we smile at you. It's so good to see you this morning. And then we say on our breath, you're wrecked. How I many of you know I'm 84 and I've been around a long time? <laughs> Look what it says now. But on the contrary, blessings, praying for their welfare. Why, you know, the Bible says even pray for your enemies. You know, I'm praying for that uh, North Korea leader over there. Yeah, I'm praying for him. Well, 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 God couldn't save him. No, now wait a minute. I read the Bible. You know what Paul said? I'm the chief of sinners. That's what Paul said. I'm the chief of sinners. 
And that's put in the Bible to help you guys thinking that, or me, thinking that we're the chief of sinners. No, Paul says, I am. And if he'll save me, he'll save you. And if he'll save you, he'll save that there dictator over there. Don't shout me down now. See, God, you can't be God. So don't try it. If God makes his mind up to do something, he's going to do it. Well, when you read about Paul's life, ain't no way that Paul's going to get saved. Read my lips. This man was drunk and he was coming home. He was staggering all over the place. He could hardly keep his balance. He was drunk. Going home. Boom! His wife was praying at the house and the Holy Ghost fell on him right there. And he... Blessed be the name of the Lord. Just like that he got saved. And I want you to know that when I walked down that aisle in that little old Baptist church a long time ago, that's what happened to me. I can't tell you. I didn't try to get do better. I didn't try to witness. I witnessed. I couldn't help it. Now, I know everybody's different, but I'm just telling you my testimony you couldn't shut me up if you tried. You couldn't have shut the apostle Paul. They put him in jail. John, they burn him in oil. Shut up, John. I don't want to hear about this gospel. I'll able to get saved. And they did. See, once that fire begins to burn inside of you, oh, I got to tell somebody about Jesus. I got to tell somebody. I ain't got time to curse people. I've only got time to tell them about God's love and how he saved me and he'll save you the same way. Born again by the Spirit of the living God. What did you put in that water anyway? <laughs> I fell in love with Susan years ago, and I have some folks tired of hearing it, and some people even tell me not to say it anymore, but I'm going to be a bad boy this morning and say it. I love that girl. Ain't nobody got my arm around, around me doing that. You love her. Now, you love her, Bob. You love her now. Oh, you love her. Listen, I can't help from loving her. God has put his love in my heart by the Holy Ghost. I can't help from loving every one of you. And I know you're sitting down, and I know you're standing up. And I'm just like my sister Rose. Because I don't know you after the outward man anymore. Paul says, I know no man after the outward man anymore. I, I used to look at Jesus that way. But no more. I see the new creation. <laughs> One that never existed before. God, by his power, recreated our inner man. You're born again by the Spirit of God. We owe our birth to God. Now, Bob, calm down. I'm trying. Look what it says. <clears throat> Praying for their welfare. See, some of us has got that spirit that this couple of the disciples had. You remember when they were go Jesus was going through Samaria, and then, and then Samaritans didn't want. Jesus to go through their little town or country road. And the disciple says, Lord, step aside. <clears throat> I'll take care of this. Uh, oh, by the way, you do want us to send fire down, don't you? And they start to say, fire? Consume these Samaritans. Burn them to the crisp. Half Jew and half Gentile. Well, burn the Gentile part out of them. 
And Jesus said, boys, boys, wait a minute here now. You, you don't quite understand what spirit you are of. Uh, do you know what spirit you are of? Uh? Sometimes. Well, you know, we have to admit sometimes we were, we were like them. You, you, remember, you remember how you used to, when you didn't like what the preacher preached, yeah, you went home and put a curse on him, didn't you? That's why, Susan, we, we break every curse. Every day, every curse anybody put on it, we break it in Jesus' name. Some people, you know, do that. They don't realize what they're doing. But they're talking bad about you. That's putting a curse on them. But they don't realize that, that they're putting a curse on themselves. Are you out there? If you're out there, wave at me. Yeah, the four of you out there. I say, yeah, okay. <laughs> See, you've got to learn that what you curse, you, if you curse somebody, you're cursing yourself. That's why you never, never, never render evil for evil. Because you're pointed on your own self and your family will get the result of it too. See, the church has got to wake up to that. You bless people. Who are you to judge another man's servant? That's God's arena. Ours is to bless people. Coming in or going. And if you can't do anything, do like Rose. Everybody, everybody say zip. Yep. Now. We got some tape over at the house if you need any. <laughs> you can, you can. In fact, Frank, don't throw it down, please. Frank, I said that one day, Frank, throw some tape down. Anybody need any tape? Hmm? One more. Did you shake your head back there? Give that woman some tape back there she can tape her mouth with. That'd be better walking around with tape on your mouth than cussing people. Look what it says, man. You don't see anything ugly in that. Praying for their welfare. Happiness. Pray for their happiness. And protection. And truly pitying and loving them. Well, that sounds like what Jesus did for us when we were yet sinners. He died for us. While we were robbing the First National Bank. <laughs> Truly pity and, and loving them. For know that to this you have been called. Everybody say, I've been called. I've been called. To, bless. to bless. Pray for my enemies. Mm-hmm. And bless people. You don't have to have the, the last word. You know, I've had people do some bad things to Susan and me, and, and, and we love them. And, and, some, and sometimes, sometimes you're at a real low. How many of you know you're in a real low? You know? And you've had hurts, and you've had different things and disappointments in your life, and, and you didn't know how to handle them, and they just build up inside, and you didn't know how to come to Jesus to get healed, and... And all that's built up inside, uh, inside of you. And then somebody says something you don't like. And it's like the atomic bomb going off. Boom! How many of you ever heard me say that? Uh, I, how many can tell when you're filling up? Huh? You're filling up, you, you know, and I'm being, you know, we all have. You, you, you know, I got a tree over there I shake. It's almost completely down. It's, 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 it used to be 45, but I get in, Susan used to get in the closet. What I used to do, I used to just get the, 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 the uh, uh, pillar. And I would, uh, where's the pillar at? I don't see no pillar around here. But I'd take the pillar and I'd put it over uh, uh, my mouth. Boy, I feel better. 
Get it out. How many of you understand what I'm talking about? It builds up inside of you. It builds up inside of you. And the devil see it building up inside of you. And all of a sudden you're with one of the persons you love or a good brother. It might be even me. And you might just bless me. You might just blow right up in my face. That's where the Bible says get wisdom. But in get all, get understanding. And all thy getting, get understanding. Understand that some of us just blow it sometimes. It's okay. Say, it's okay. Because you blow it too sometimes. I ain't talking about blowing your nose. That's good for you too. But you blow all that stuff out. This is why people are committing suicide. I was watching, looking the other day, and, and I was checking the, the internet. Thousands of people every day commit suicide. Because they don't know how to get it out. They don't know how to get clean. They don't know how to come to the Lord. And, and, and cast all your cares upon the Lord. Cast all your cares upon the Lord. Somebody didn't hear me. Cast all, all your cares upon the Lord. Keep the inside of your heart and your spirit clean. And say, Lord, thank you for the blood that washes me and cleanses me. Young people are so fed up with their father and mother's actions and reactions sometimes. They don't know what to do. And they go out and they get on drugs. Or they go out and get drunk. Oh, yeah, you may marry for a while. Oh, yeah, you're free just for a little while. The next morning you feel so ashamed of yourself. So you have to know how to handle these stresses. Young people from 18 to 24... Committing suicide by the thousands in the United States of America. And they have everything. I didn't even have air conditioning when I was a boy. We didn't even have screens in our house. The mosquitoes looked like buzzards. My, my my dad had my dad had one little little fan. It was about that big, and it was, and he'd put it on himself. And I, except I sneak in there and try to get a little, just a little, just a little, a little right, right up right up in there, be just fine. <laughs> oh, it would be hot. <laughs> well, why didn't you stick your head in the refrigerator? Refrigerator? What's that? We had an ice box. <laughs> People with all the blessings in the world, my heart bleeds for them because they haven't tapped onto the vine. So, see, we're a limb, and if you cut yourself off from the vine, the life comes from the vine, the root. You've got to be grounded and rooted in his love. Not the love of the world, not the love of Dick, Tom, and Harry, but rooted and grounded in his love. And Paul says, it's the love of God that moves me and motivates me to do the will of the Father in heaven. It's available for everybody. But you've got to tell you, I'm going to tell you something. You've got to get into the word of God. You know what they're saying about all these little cell phones now? People are just 24-7. In about 30 years, just anxiety is building up so much into people just watching. Don't want to miss nothing. <laughs> Playing games on it and doing all kind of stuff. Addicted. Addicted. God's people addicted. Now, don't go out and throw your... Um, cell phone in the lake and don't give it to me <laughs> this young man came to me and said Bob you know I'm trying to I, I'm trying to overcome sex I said well yeah I understand that I'm a man yeah mm -hmm. he says uh, that TV is, is, is just awful all those pictures on TV I said well quit looking at it he says I can't I said I'll tell you what you do just give your TV get rid of your TV get it out of the house so he brought it over to my house. <laughs> now I got two TVs to, to, to fight. So I put, I put his out in the garage. But he got a break for about three months from that thing. And we prayed for him everything. He got delivered and set free. 
And now he learned that everything is to be done in moderation. All of this bad news coming in, into your psychic, into your spirit, it's contaminating. The Bible says, cleanse yourself from all contamination of spirit and body. No, I'm not old-fashioned and I'm not a square. I'm just telling you the truth. A lot of young people committing suicide or getting on drugs and alcohol, pornography. I walked into my great-grandson's room one day, and he was on his, on his little uh, thing. I said, oh, you reading the Bible, son? He looked at me. I said, let me see what you're looking at. <laughs> he didn't have to show me. I knew what he was looking at. He's looking at the same thing I looked at when I was his age. Some of you know how to take that. Now, of course, nobody in here like that. I mean, you know. Oh, there's one back there. I see him way back there. Okay. <laughs> what are you looking at? What are you thinking? Stinking thinking will make you stink. All right, now, just a little while, we're going to close here. We were called, say everybody say, I was called, I was called to bless. When somebody talks bad to you, you just bless them. The beautiful thing is if you do, what will God do? Somebody tell me. God will bless you. So you get what you sow. And if you sow curses, you're going to get a curse. If you sow ochre, you're going to get what? You sow corn, you're going to get what? If you sow tomato seeds, you're going to get what? If you sow a dog, you're going to get what? Whatever you sow, you're going to reap. That's just the way it is, folks. And it don't take much intelligence to understand that. So stop what you're saying about people and start blessing them. And guess what? You're going to get blessed. But who's going to bless you? God. And God is not a man that he should lie. All right. I learned this a long time ago when I, I tell you, I thank God. When I started blessing people, I started getting blessed and blessed and blessed. And the Bible says rejoice in the Lord. And when you start blessing people, you're going to get blessed in every kind of way. And you're going to start rejoicing in the Lord. And a lot of good things are going to happen because you get what you sow. Amen. All right. Look what it says now. This ain't too heavy, is it? Uh, you want me to lighten up a little bit? How many wants me to lighten up a little bit? Uh, how, many, how many wants to make it a little, a little harder? <laughs> Since you insist, I'll do it. <laughs> For you know that to this you have been called, that you may yourselves inherit a blessing from God. That you may attain a blessing as heirs, bringing welfare and happiness and protection to them and yourself. All right. You don't have to know the whole Bible, but I give you scriptures that when I speak and preach, you better write them down. Because that's going to determine how your day is going to go. Now. You say, well, Bob, all oh, that's good and all, but I still have that little something in me that I want to send them to the moon. Well, I'll help you out there. Turn to James 4. <coughs> Turn to James 4. We'll let James help us out here. <coughs> all right, everybody there. James 4, 6. Put it on the board. Here we go. Say, God has made provisions for everything. Now, it says, for he, who's he? God. God. Okay, see, he gives us, who's us? That's us, isn't it? More and more grace, power of the Holy Spirit to meet this evil tendency and all others fully. You know, you said, when, when, I, was a, uh, when I was a teenager especially, you say, you say something to me, and I had to top it. 
How many is like that? Somebody say something to you. Well, you know, your grandpa has a, 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 a something. <laughs> your, your grandfather is a, is a nut. And, of course, you always come back and say, yeah, but your grandfather is a bigger nut. Always, always, you, you, isn't that you feel like you got to, you know, you, should, you sock it to me. You remember the scriptures about sock we're justified you. by what? And, and, and not what was that scripture that again? Anybody that? remember? By what we say? Uh -huh. Now notice, God will give us more and more grace by the power of the Holy Spirit to meet this evil tendency and all others. That is why he says God sets himself against the who? Wow. Proud and haughty. Well, I ain't got no proud in me. <laughs> and I'm not haughty either. I don't care what the preacher says. I'm a loving man. I'm, I'm, I'm a man that loves when you're doing what I want you to do. But if you don't do what I want you to do, you out of here. Look what it says. That he is why he sets God. God sets himself against. He, let me tell you something. He don't resist us. He loves us. That's why he resists us to get our attention. Some of us will just, we'll just, we'll just go our way unless God gets our attention. So God will give, now look what it says, but gives grace continuously to the lowly, those who are humble enough to receive it. So there's a condition. We got this problem. We send people to the moon. We do all this back and forth. You know, you say this, I say that. It goes on all the time in your life, and you're reaping all of this, all this stuff in your life. You wonder, Lord, where you is? Not knowing that we're bringing the curses upon ourselves instead of humbling ourselves. Everybody hum humble ourselves. Mm. Boy, I've had people say things to me, and boy, I, I mean, I had it. I, I, Lord, this is going to be good. Here's a, moon, get ready. Here's another one. <laughs> you can't do that. See, it takes grace and humility to not answer back. You know, when Susan and me first got married and I talk about how she'd go in the closet. She'd never, never badmouth me, but she'd go in the closet and tell God on me. <laughs> See all this missing hair right here? That fire really will burn the hair right off your head. <laughs> I, know some, I know some of you are not bald, but you, you don't have much hair on your back. <laughs> Let me tell you something. This is truth that I'm talking about, and I'm using a lot of humor. It helps you to sort of take it in a little bit when somebody can bring a little humor to it. Look at look what it says there. All right. You've got to be humble enough to receive it. Turn to the next verse. So be subject to God. Be submissive to him. Resist the devil. Stand firm against the devil. Not God. See, most people are resisting God. You ain't going nowhere. That you ain't, we ain't going nowhere if we do that. But downhill, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. So, what do we pray, Father? You know, I always want to send him to the moon, but I, uh, Pastor Bob said that ain't nice. So, I need grace, and God says, humble yourself. When is the last time you got down on your, on your knees? I haven't seen nobody at the altar in a long time. I might as well get rid of the altar. Just. <coughs> <laughs> oh, you wait till you get 84. <laughs> <coughs> Lord, give my wife grace where she won't fuss at me anymore. No, Bob, it's not about Susan, it's about you. Amen. 
Holy Spirit, help me. I need your grace. I need your grace to love my brother and my sister. Y'all, excuse me. (laughs) 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 You, where did you get 84? The Bible says, listen to this, come to the throne of God to receive condemnation. Come to the throne of God boldly, with confidence, to receive condemnation. No, grace, grace. Folks, I have lived at the throne of God until the victory came. Sometimes we just bend one knee, spring back up. Sometimes you might have to stay there a couple of hours. Oh my goodness, don't tell the church, Bob, the church that, Bob, they don't understand. You can have to get at the, at the altar for a couple of hours. I mean, at home, in your own closet, right? Just put your face down and say, I ain't leaving, Lord. You give me the grace to love, to love that brother, to love that sister. Are you out there? See, we are an instant bunch of folks. What do you call that thing? Susan heats my coffee with it. Uh, what do you call it? Microwave. microwave. She's got it. <laughs> microwave. Put it in there. 30 seconds, you're out. You go to the throne, hit the button, 30 seconds. Thank you for the grace, Lord. You ain't got no grace. You ain't got nothing. You didn't even bend your knees yet. See, God will welcome you. That's what he wants. He wants you to come and spend time with him because he wants to pour himself into you. He wants to bless you. Come to the throne. Now notice this. Come to the throne of God. Everybody say receive. Receive. Learn to receive. Five more minutes. I've got to let you go. I'm getting hungry too. You know, the Lord got hungry when he was on the earth. You remember that? Let me say something. So, and, and, and I know a lot of humor comes out of me. But what, but what, is, inside, what is inside of you that's eating you alive? I want you to see, get yourself free today. I'm here to help you. We're here to help you. None of us, there's times when people have done all kind of things to all of us. We know that. I can tell you stories after stories that you wouldn't even believe. But as a pastor, people have confessed even murder to me. Confess adultery, fornication, you name it, they have confessed it to me. I know about the hurt and the wound and the rejection that people feel. God's come to deliver us. Notice what it says. Go to the Lord. Be subject to Him. Spend time with Him until you get the answer. How many's ever dialed a number and, the other, and on the other side, would you wait for a little bit and you stand there and wait? How many's ever done that, you know? Well, if they don't soon answer me, I'm putting this phone down. You know, sometimes, you know, God will test you out. Let's see if it really means business. There's one thing I've learned as a pastor, and if I'm ministering to somebody and I know they don't really mean business and they just want my time and they just want to spend time with me and I love them and I'd like to spend time. But see, I know that that thing is there. And people love to spend time with Susan and me. In fact, I like to spend time with Susan too. (laughs) That ain't the way you get it. You get desperate. I don't want this ugly self to stick its head up anymore. Christ paid for it at the cross. I want, I want the victory that I might glorify him. 
I want to love people. Because you see, you feel good all inside all the time. You don't go around with these harboring these bad feelings, by the way, which is bringing cancer and all kind of other diseases in your bodies. That's what they're saying now. The doctors are finding that out, that people don't forgive uh, quick enough and easy enough. They're killing their own selves. The doctors are finding this out. We knew it years ago. Forgive. Continue to bless. Bless you. I want everybody to bow their heads. So I want you to say, Father, I thank you. I choose to forgive everybody that's ever hurt me. You have forgiven me. And I forgive them. As you have forgiven me. I'm free to worship you. To love people. Whether they do anything or not. Thank you Lord. I'm free. In Jesus name. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay. God bless you. And I want to say the... Um, Blessing on our food. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the food that we're about to receive, the physical food. And Lord, help us to walk out of this place knowing that you're a good God. It's the goodness of God, Romans 2, 4, that leads us to repentance. And you've been so good to us. And we want to thank you and rejoice in the Lord and rejoice in one another that we're brothers and sisters in the Lord and we're going to spend eternity with one another and we thank you for that. I give you praise and glory in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. God bless you and I hope to see some of you back there.